Welcome back to Live With, brought to you by Species Nutrition. Visit SpeciesNutrition.com. I'm Dave Palumbo, and today's guest took him 40 years in the making to get here today, where I can actually announce him as a new IFBB pro, the man I'm talking about, Ralph Koshio. Welcome. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. It's, it's great to finally meet you. I've been listening to your channel forever. <laughs> Six, you're 61 years old. You won the Masters. Uh, 60 over and over class at the uh, NPC Universe this uh, last weekend, or two yep. weekends ago, I should say. You got the IFBB Pro card. You've been trying since, since for 40 years, since 1978. Matter of fact, you, you told me the story, and I'm going to let you tell a little bit. In 1978, uh, you you actually the show that you first did was won by John Kemper, and a lot yep. of us know John Kemper is you know the NPC District Chairman in in, in Jersey. Uh, a great competitor in his own right. He's no longer with us. May he rest in peace. Uh, you, you've been around the block a few times, Ralph. Yeah, yeah. I started competing at 21. Like I said, I showed up to Ramapo College for my first contest. And back then, Dave, it wasn't weight. It was height. Sure. It was, this is before weight. So I had got, I'm like 160. I have guys like over 200 pounds in my class. <laughs> uh, like I told you, Elliot Gilchrist, he was in his 50s at the time, but he had beaten Franco Colombo. And there was some other really big guys. So honestly, when I got backstage, I was so intimidated, I almost left. <laughs> and, and then I said, you know what? Nobody knows me. I have nothing to lose. So I went in and I actually took second because I had, my conditioning was good. Yeah. Yeah. Now, how would you say bodybuilding has changed since the 70s into the modern era, 2018 we're in now? What have you seen as far as the competitors go that has, has changed dramatically? Yeah, you know, back in the late 70s, 80s, I would go in Mr. New Jersey, uh, you know, uh, local shows here in New Jersey, and we would sell out. We would sell out every contest. It was crazy. There would be people outside that couldn't get in. Really? Wow. Yeah, it just seemed bigger back then, and the guys seemed to be more conditioned. You know, nobody thought about, I want to get my pro card in three years or whatever. We just loved to train. We would, right. I, I trained at a gate, Gateway Gym in Bloomfield, and all the guys there competed, and we just trained hard and competed. We never really thought about turning pro. And you know, back then, Dave, like one guy a year would turn pro because right. you, had to win, you had to win the overall in the nationals. So there was very few guys turning pro. So I never had any expectations of turning pro. I just loved to train and, and compete. And the funny thing was, you, even winning the Nationals wasn't enough back then. You had to go to the World Amateur Championships after that and yeah. win, the, win the Mr. Universe contest, you know, yeah. in Europe. Yeah, it was crazy hard back then. And, you know, I was a middleweight. So as a middleweight, I'm not, I'm not beating any heavyweight in the overall or, or anything. So, you know, I would just do the best I could. I just loved doing it. But now today, you know, I guess they're trying to grow the pro ranks so they have a lot of pro cards, right? They got, right. you know, you got classic, you got physique, you got bikini, you got masters, you got, it, it's, it's easier to get your pro card today. It is, but there's also a lot more people competing. So uh, yeah. I guess they figure proportionally you're, you're getting, you know, better representation. Now, let me ask you this question. Um, was there ever a time period over that 40 years where you kind of took a big break or was it were you continuously competing the whole time? Yeah, no, no. I competed for like 20 years, like two, three times a year in the beginning. And then uh, I had kids and I took 12 years off from competing. Now, in the last 40 years, I never stopped training. I never took my foot off the right. gas. I took off a week the most in the last 40 years. And that's when I partially tore my rotator. So never stopped eating, never stopped training. But yeah, I took 12 years off for competing while my kids were little and then went back in like 2010 and started competing again. You got a lot of, you know, quality, mature muscle on that body. We're looking at pictures <laughs> of you right now. I mean, your conditioning was amazing. How is it that you have no loose skin at 60 years old? I have loose skin at 50 years old in my body. You know what? You know why, Dave? I, I don't gain 40, 50 pounds after a show and then have to lose it. I was always within 10 pounds of my competition weight. Wow. So you're, yeah, you're, I, you're a real OCD guy, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it's never about weight cut with me. It's I need 12 weeks to get 
crazy peeled because I don't have the best genetics and the guys with the better genetics, you know, would kick my ass if I if I didn't step on stage shredded. You just you just outlasted everyone, Ralph. That's how you, you won, basically. All the all the guys you competed with, they just either died or they just quit. <laughs> You're exactly right. And you know, way back then we didn't have uh, these gurus. You know, yeah. we didn't have Chad or right. or Chris Aceto or Hani. I mean, I think you know the guy back then in the late eighties or eighties and, and even late seventies was, was Bob Gruskin. <laughs> sure. Did you work with Bob at all? No, Bob used to come to my gym all the time. He was the, he was the nicest guy. He would talk to me, but I didn't have the look for Bob. I didn't have the blonde hair, <laughs> blue eye, uh, and superior genetics. He, right. he helped guys like, uh, Natashak. He sure. helped guys like, uh, Casey Kachurik. I used to train with, he turned pro. Right. Um, I, you know, I didn't have the kind of genetics that, <laughs> that Bob would waste his time on. But Bob was a great, great guy and very knowledgeable. Yeah, we all we all learned a lot from uh, from Bob. That's for sure over the years, myself included. And he right, he was one of the original guys. Um, what was the like the the big title to win back in the seventies and eighties? What was like the title everyone went for, Mister America? Yeah, yeah. You try to win Mr. New Jersey. That was big around here. And then you, you know, you thought you were ready. So I won Mr. New Jersey in 81. Okay. And then, uh, you know, I thought I was somewhat of a big deal until I went in my first uh, national show. It was uh, Mr. USA in Knoxville, Tennessee. I think it was 1983. And boy, I got backstage and looked at those guys. <laughs> they were, all of them were just genetic freaks. Right. So right. you really, you really get you really get a, a an education when you see what you're up against, you know, those guys that are with the superior genetics. Let me ask you this question. You know, a lot of people think that bodybuilding, you know, obviously it, it's got its health benefits, but it's also got its, its, its negatives, you know. Uh, we're, you know, we eat a high, crazy high-protein diet. We, you know, there's, there's drug use in bodybuilding, and, and uh, everyone always says how bad it is for you. You're obviously a testament to the fact you look like you're, you're 100% healthy to me. Um, yeah. How have you maintained your health over the years, you know, of continuously competing? Yeah, you know, that that's a great question. So for me, Dave, health always came first. Once I started competing, I started researching, reading everything I could get my hands on about nutrition, training, so I could be successful on stage. And, it, you know, I've learned it's 75 to 80 percent nutrition. Yep. So even in the off season, I eat very clean uh, you know, organic, everything's grass fed, like, you know, you, you're, yeah. you know, grass fed beef, grass fed bison, uh, mm -hmm. no farm raised fish, you know, the, the real sure. fish. And, uh, I eat that way all year round and, uh, no processed carbs, no bread, no pasta, no sugar. Um, keep the carb. You remember when we were in school, they had the food, the food pyramid. Sure. And, uh, <laughs> and don't eat any fats because you, you, you're going to get heart disease. Yeah. And then you had protein, vegetables, and down the bottom, eat a lot of carbs, processed carbs <laughs> and uh, <laughs> grains. Right. Well, guess what? All, all that stuff causes inflammation in the body, and that's the stuff you need to stay away from. You, you people out there should flip that food pyramid. Eat the good fats. Right. Uh, and I've heard you say many times, sure. and that's why, like, I take your uh, macadamia nut oil. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was younger, I did not eat enough fats when I used to uh, do my prep. And your body wants – it'll hold on to fat. It wants homeostasis, so it'll hold sure. on to fat if you're not giving it fat. So I've learned over the years to give it – I eat a lot of good fats even when I'm prepping. Mm. And it helps. It helps your skin, and it helps, helps you get lean, you mm -hmm. know. Now you look, you even you you your your skin is some of the best skin I've seen on a sixty plus year old guy. I mean, you really have no looseness anywhere. It looks very taut, even on your face. I mean, you're you're obviously a testament to the fact that that good clean living you know, goes a long way. What do you do for a living aside from bodybuilding? I'm an accountant. I, I actually work for Shoprite Supermarkets. Oh, really? That's funny. Yeah, I've been working for thirty eight years for them. I, I, ever since I came out of college, they're a great company. You know, people always have to eat. They hired me in 1980 during a recession, so you know that told me that I should stick with them. You're one hell of a consistent guy. You've been bodybuilding, competing for 40 <laughs> years, and working for Shoprite for 38 years. No wonder why you have no deviations. I always tell people, look, the most successful bodybuilders are the ones that are the most consistent because consistency is the most important 
uh, predictor of success in bodybuilding. Most people have great genetics, they eat right, they take drugs, but they're not consistent in applying it on a regular basis over and over and over again. And that's what it takes to be a good bodybuilder. And you just, you proved it. 100%, I'm, I'm, I'm sick like that. I mean, <laughs> you think you take a lot of supplements, I hear what you take. <laughs> I probably take more. You know, people think I'm crazy, uh, but you know, it works. You, you stick with what works. What, what do you think are the most important supplements for people to take as they get older? I like omega-3s, I right. mean a good omega-3, um, you know, back thousands of years ago, our omega-6, omega-3 ratio was almost one to one, Right. you know, based on our diet, when sure. we would live off the land. Today, with all the bad oils, vegetable oil, all these uh, soybean oil, it's in everything. Yeah. The average American is like 20 or 30 to one omega-6 to omega-3, so Absolutely. we do not, we do not get enough omega-3. So. I try to get a lot of omega-3s. I supplement with omega-3s, krill oil, calamari oil. Um, you don't really want the fish oil. You don't want an animal that's been around too long and has uh, been able to accumulate uh, toxins and pollutants. So you want a, a young animal like krill or calamari that haven't had the time to to pick up a lot of pollutants. Yeah, we use uh, we use the anchovies and, and, and the smaller fish in our uh, omega lyse formula because of that. Yeah, because I don't want to use the, the big the big game fish that have like you said the mercuries and stuff like that. Exactly. That that that's wise. What about in terms? Do you take any like are you into CoQ10 and and, and some yeah, of those yeah. supplements? Oh oh god, Dave! I in the morning with breakfast I take I counted it once like twenty five pills. Me you too. know I take. Like you, you know, L-glutathione, uh, mm -hmm. all these uh, supposedly that will help anti-aging. Right. I take all those uh, burdock root. Uh, <laughs> I mean, the list goes on and on. And then with, you know, with with every meal, I'm taking more uh, uh, Tudka, milk thistle, things for my liver. Um, you know, bodybuilders have to be careful with their liver, liver and kidneys. Uh, yeah. You want to make sure you're detoxing them. How often do you go for blood work? Once a year. Once a year. I went in uh, last last fall, and everything was fine. Are the doctors amazed when they see you and come in there at six, you know, <laughs> your age? You know, most doctors give me a hard time because I'm honest with them at the way I eat and all. Because, Dave, I eat like 85% raw. Wow. Uh, and most of them would give me a hard time. But the doctor I'm with now, he's like, you know what? My wife eats like that, and she's so healthy. He goes, you just keep doing what you're doing because your blood work is perfect. Do you eat uh, protein sources raw too? I do, I do. Like you what? Know, it's got beef, bison, it's, it's gotta be grass fed, honestly, uh, obviously, because if you're eating something that's grass fed and it has an alkaline environment, disease can't live in an alkaline environment. It sure. lives in an acidic environment. So things like E. coli, um, you know, that stuff people get, that can't survive in an alkaline environment. So I, I eat all grass fed, natural you know do you eat sushi i mean some yeah. people have trouble yeah i mean you know i like food i'm just nervous to eat like meat and stuff like that i know people who eat chicken raw yeah i eat chicken um uh, hearts chicken livers raw wow now how do you prepare that stuff is there any special way yeah i just throw it in my mouth yeah really you don't like put it in some kind of brines and any kind of like no. seasonings no I'll put a little salt uh, uh, a little himalayan sea salt on the uh, beef and the bison but but that's about it. And I always eat my beef and vegetables first for digestion purposes. I'll eat those first, I'll wait a couple minutes, and then I'll eat my carbs. And my carbs are always out of the ground, you know, whether it's uh, yams, quinoa, uh, oatmeal, but n nothing processed, never, and, and no sugar. Interesting, okay, and, and uh, does anyone else eat this food with you? Or are you no. like a lone wolf? No, <laughs> I've been divorced twice, no. I. <laughs> I do it myself. And Dave, I've been doing it for eight years and I haven't been sick. That's awesome. So this is this is not a short term thing where oh boy, he's you know, he better watch it. He's gonna he's gonna get into trouble. Yeah. I've been doing it I've been doing it for eight years. Do you and slice I, up the meat like in sli in thin slices? How do you make it palatable? I I, I buy the uh, ninety two percent lean ground beef. Oh, because you eat ground beef. Do you mix I, it up into rice and stuff or how do you do it? Like <laughs> just raw, just put it right in your yeah, mouth. Just raw and I'll and I'll put like raw asparagus or some kind of vegetable <laughs> in my mouth with it so you know and you're like hardcore you'll just put it in a, t a tupperware and just just take it out and start eating it raw yeah yeah yeah, yeah. wow that's awesome yeah. 
the vegetables and the meat first, <laughs> and then the and then the carbs. You know, after you got to talk feel, shop right into buying a grass fed beef for you there. Oh, they do. Oh, they do. Okay. I get most of my grass fed at Shoprite. Yep, they have grass run farms, Clayton's. Wow. Uh, even even Walmart now is carrying grass fed beef because it's growing. They're not stupid. They want to make money, so right. they're everybody's carrying it. Well, I, you got a fascinating story. It ended in, in a terrific note with the IFEB Pro card. The question now is. What do you do? Do you want to? Are you going to keep competing as a pro now? Well, you know, I feel like I should do one pro show, Dave. There's there's one September first in Pittsburgh. Yeah. They actually have over forty, over fifty, over sixty, over seventy pros. Wow. I feel like I want to do one just to see how I stack up against. Uh, Why not? Yeah. You know. Why uh, not? You might win I'll, some prize money after all these years. You never know. <laughs> Yeah, you know what the prize money's like for anything other than open. That's all right. It's the same prize money that when you started in 78, they were giving out to the Olympia guys, a thousand bucks. Exactly. <laughs> you went full circle. Look at Craig. Craig Richardson just won. Yeah. And he, I saw his prize money. It, you know, it didn't even cover his supplements for sure. No, I'm sure it didn't. I'm sure it didn't. Well, Craig's, Ralph, Craig's been- I want to congratulate you on the big win. Thank you for filling us in on some of your longevity tips and, uh, and your eating habits. I always find that stuff fascinating. I know my, my, my viewers out there probably do as well. Good luck at the uh, Pittsburgh Pro, uh, I guess you could say Masters, that's going to take place at that North American uh, weekend. And if you win, you got to let us know because uh, that's a, it's a great success story. I will. And Dave, I want to take this opportunity to thank you um, for all your work, all your information. There's so much in- misinformation. After 40 years, I've learned a lot. There's so much misinformation yeah. out there. And you tell it straight, and you're my go-to website. And I want to thank you for you know your 30-minute question and answers every week. Very welcome. Your muscle in the morning. All all your content is amazing, and I I want to thank you. Very welcome. And like I said, uh, I love to hear a good ending or a happy ending to a uh, to a hardworking guy. And uh, you're I don't know if there's anyone more passionate about bodybuilding out there than you because you've had the tenacity to last uh, almost 40 years in our industry now, and that's. Uh, that's got to be some kind of record. Yeah, thank you, Dave. I appreciate that. You got to go up against Robbie Robinson now. <laughs> Forget that. Imagine yeah. that. Imagine you and Robbie on stage after all this. You you started in '78 watching probably Pumping Iron and then seeing Robbie yeah. there. Now you yeah. can actually get up on stage with him. I went to the premiere in Manhattan when it came out. Uh, Pumping <laughs> Iron. I, I was at the theater. Yeah, Robbie's in his 70s. He still looks amazing. Yeah, he does. He does. He's like uh, he's like you. He's he's into very healthy, natural yeah. eating and. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's into the whole Zen, relaxing, meditating type thing. And you know, there's a lot to be said for that, Dave. And when I was younger, I was all about uh, intellect and physical, but I was lacking in my spirituality. So now I'm trying to bring, uh, I, I spend most of my time and effort uh, bringing my spirituality up so that it's, uh, I have balance in my life. And it, it helps so much. You know, I, I'm sure you probably meditate. Yeah. It helps with your training. Sure. It helps with your outlook on life. It's it's for people. When I was younger, I'm I'm going to tell the young guys out there, start getting some books, and and get into some spiritual stuff. It it will help you immensely. Ralph, no no injuries, no joint problems or anything like that. You know, I have some knee knee issues, but uh, never surgery. I have wow. some meniscus meniscus issues in my knees, but never a surgery. Thank thank God. Yeah, you're lucky. You're definitely lucky. You escape. You probably have good genetics too. Probably everyone in your family lives to 100. I bet you. My dad's 94. All right, there you go. All right. Good genetics. I always say never hurts. <laughs> it's all about genetics. That's You're right. right. All right, Ralph. Uh, keep us updated. Good luck in Pittsburgh. And that's going to take us to the end of another episode of Live with. Brought to you by Species Nutrition. Visit speciesnutrition.com. I'm Dave Palumbo. We'll see you next time.